What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Money Mondays. And I got an interesting topic for us today, and I wanna center it around this quote from Dan Kennedy. Very well-known quote, it says that, he or she who can pay the most to acquire a new customer wins every time in the long run. And I'm paraphrasing slightly, but he or she who can pay most to acquire a new customer will win in the long run every single time. And when we kind of play this thought exercise out, we can see how this would make sense, right? Because if I'm able to spend more money than my competitor to acquire a new customer, then eventually they're gonna go out of business and spend all their money trying to market and compete with me. And meanwhile, I'm going to end up with all of the customers. And so then we have to ask the question, well, what makes me more able as a business owner to acquire customers at higher prices and still make it make sense. In other words, how can I put myself in a position to be the person who is able to pay more to acquire any given customer? There's one simple answer to that. LTV, lifetime value. What do I mean by that? I mean that when AT&T does a commercial they are not necessarily concerned about how much that commercial costs because it might cost them $50,000 for that ad placement at, I don't know, the Super Bowl, or that's way too cheap for the Super Bowl. Let's just say 50 grand for an ad placement on your general daytime television, right? And they know that they're gonna get a certain amount of customers from that. And they know that within 12 months of airing that ad for $50,000, they're gonna make $10,000. And you might say, well, that seems like a pretty terrible business model because they're spending 50,000 to get $10,000 worth of customers. And this is the way that most businesses think, especially most short-term thinkers. Most people who are pitching products on Instagram or they're using social media to sell things, a lot of people think in the short-term fashion. But in reality, what AT&T is doing here, and I'm just using them as an example, I have no idea what their, their actual numbers are, so don't sue me. But what they're actually doing here is they're banking on the lifetime value of those customers and they're willing to outbid their competition. Let's just take Verizon for example. They're willing to outbid them and maybe Verizon has an ad that they're willing to pay 40K for. AT&T is more than willing to pay 50,000 even though they're only gonna get 10,000 in return for it. The reason they're gonna do that is because one, they know that if they can get more customers and they can get a bigger share of the customer base, especially with something that's contractual like cell service there's so much friction for moving services it's a pain in the butt you got to go visit the store you got to break your contract you probably got to pay some fees you got to switch over your phone which means you lose service for at least half a day and the, the person in the store probably doesn't know what they're doing because they're a 19 year old who's trying to pay their way through school and like they don't know anything about cell service so like, like all these different uh frictions or points of friction in the process make it so that once you have a cell service carrier you really don't wanna change unless you just really, really have to or you absolutely hate the service for whatever reason. So they know that it's worth spending more money to acquire those customers. Why? Because one, once they have the customer, they're probably not gonna lose them. And then what if we extrapolate that point, what does that mean? Well, if I have a customer and I'm not going to lose them, then maybe I get 10,000 this year, but what if all of those customers stay with me for the next 10 years? Well, now I've got 100,000. Well, what if those same customers stay with me for 20 years? Well, now I've got 200,000 off of my $50,000 ad. And so this is the game that the big companies are playing. They are investing money up front, knowing that they're not gonna get a return on their short-term ad dollars, on their short-term cost of acquisition for a new customer. They are doing this in anticipation that they will be able to retain that customer long enough to turn a profit over the long run. Let me give you two quick examples of this that are very real world to me. A lot of you know that I work with Dr. Eric Thomas, number one motivational speaker in the world, and a lot of you have probably read his newest book, UOU. UOU is a New York Times bestseller. We've sold over 100,000 copies in the first three and a half months of it being released. Massive success by any metric, right? Believe it or not, we did not write that book, like the, and I say we as, as, as in the team, obviously E gets full credit for writing the book and going through the whole process. He's phenomenal at what he does and all the content is just 
completely next level. Um, by the way, if you haven't read the book, you have to go to uoubook.com, check it out. It is the first time that ET has told, in my opinion, his whole story from start to finish and also attached a lesson to every single story that he tells. Like every chapter of his life has a corresponding lesson that's gonna teach you exactly how you can replicate that success. Phenomenal, phenomenal book. There's a reason why it sold so well. That being said, we did not as a team strategize that book for sales. We did not strategize that book for profit. And the reason I say that is because if we just wanted to make money with that book, we could have self-published and sold way more. Like we probably would have sold more and we, well, I won't say that. We would have sold at least as much and we would have kept way, way more, like way more of that. I mean, when you, when you self-publish a book, it is almost a hundred percent profit margin. When you go through a publishing company, you're incredibly lucky if you get like 40% of, uh, of all the sales. Okay. So I say that because we didn't do that sequence of events in the two or three years of work and spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to actually put this book out there because we wanted a short term um, return on our investment on simply profiting off of book sales. The whole goal behind that was to get my man on the New York Times bestseller list so that his speaker fee can 2x, can 3x, right? because that's a huge accolade in our industry. And so by achieving that milestone, it allows him to have even more credibility than he already had to charge higher and higher prices for his keynote presentations at different conferences and different events. And so we know that the, the money and the time and the energy and the effort that we spent on creating the book, as well as the opportunity cost of the increased profit margin from all of those sales that we could have capitalized on from self-publishing, which by the way, you can't hit the New York Times list if you're a self-published author. You have to go through a big box publisher to hit the New York Times list. So that's the reason that we were willing to sacrifice additional profit margin in, in, in exchange for the opportunity to hit the list and get that credibility, right? Um, all of that that we sacrificed, we're not planning on making that up in the next 12 months. We're planning on making that up over the next decade of increased speaker fees that came from that. And eventually over a long enough time horizon, we're gonna see a massive return on investment that people who have short-term thinking simply are never going to be able to achieve, okay? And so this is a real life example of how we are using this whole concept. When we pay more upfront than other people are willing to spend to be able to get a book on the New York Times list or to be able to acquire new customers or to be able to do PR and outreach or whatever it is, when you can front load the cost because, and here's this is the important part, you, you can only do that. You can only do that if you have a long enough tail to be able to capitalize on it. Meaning if ET stops speaking tomorrow, it doesn't make sense. Why? Because our increased speaker fees aren't going to be uh, enforced over a long enough duration of time to be able to actually capitalize on the increased speaker's fee and then get a ROI on putting all the time, energy and effort and sacrificed opportunity cost of the profit margin for the book. Fair? So it has to be over a long enough time horizon. Same, same idea, different example somebody who's pitching a product on their Instagram. They've got a $2,000 coaching program. Great, that's phenomenal. If that's all you have, then every customer is worth $2,000 for you. So you might be willing to pay $1,000 for a customer, right, to acquire a new customer. You might be willing to pay $1,000 on ads or organic or outreach or whatever it is, and then you get a 50% profit margin when you close a sale. But imagine if somebody had the same $2,000 coaching program that you had, and then they also had a continuity on the back end where they downsell the upsell, and they have something for $200 a month. Well now, and let's say that they, they have an average retention of six months. Well now their average lifetime value is no longer 2000, it is now 3200. So that person is willing and able to spend 2000 to acquire a customer or 2500 to acquire a customer and still stay profitable. And there's no way you can compete with them because your ad is not even gonna get in front of your ideal customers because they're gonna get there because they paid more. 
And so they are going to eventually swallow up the marketplace unless somebody else comes along and they have a $10,000 product with a $500 a month upsell and they're going after the same people you're going after and their conversion rates are just as good. And then they're gonna be able to spend more to acquire the customer and then you're gonna go out of business too. The whole thing revolves around lifetime value. So going all the way back full circle to our example of cell phone companies, the reason that they are able to spend so much money on advertising is because they have customers that stay with them for 20 or 30 years. It's not a six month coaching program or a 12 month mastermind. We're talking decades of a relationship between a customer and a company. And when you have that type of lifetime value, you don't really care what it costs to get a customer and you can out market, out advertise, and eventually out compete a lot of the other companies that are going to be in your industry and in your space vying for the same eyeballs of the same customers that you're trying to reach. And so I say this to say that if you do not have a long term profitability strategy, you are behind the eight ball. Whatever kind of business you run, I don't care if it's an online coaching business, if it is a brick and mortar yogurt shop, it does not matter. If you do not have a strategy for how you can profitably acquire customers and retain those customers over years, not months, not weeks, over years, you are not going to be able to compete in the modern marketplace, all right? Again, as Dan Kennedy famously said, he or she who can pay the most to acquire a customer will win every time in the long run. I hope that this was a good perspective shift for you. I hope that this opened your eyes to a new way of conceptualizing business and thinking about what we're here to do. As always, please like, comment, subscribe. Let's continue the conversation down below in the comments and please 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 do me a huge favor if you found value from this please share this with some of your other entrepreneurial friends some of your friends in management executives whoever you know that's going to benefit from this type of mentality from this kind of content please do us a huge favor and share that with them because we truly believe that as each one of us individually gets better, we can contribute, especially as entrepreneurs. When we get better as entrepreneurs and business people, that allows us to contribute more to the world. That allows us to do what we do best. And I think that's how we make the world a better place, one person at a time. Thank you so much for watching Money Mondays and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace.